Hello, welcome back. Cultural theory is proposed by Edward T. Hall, the American anthropologist, who offers us an effective means of examining cultural similarities and differences in both perception and communication. Hall defines context as the information that surrounds an event. It is inextricably bound up with the meaning of the event. If the culture of the society was iceberg, Hall reasoned, then there are some aspects visible above the water, but there is a larger portion hidden beneath the surface. What does that mean? The external or conscious part of the culture. Is what we can see, and is the tip of iceberg, and induces behaviors and some beliefs. The internal, subconscious part of the culture is below the surface of the society, and includes some beliefs and the values and the thought patterns that underlie behavior. There are major differences between the conscious and unconscious culture. Internal versus external, implicitly learned and explicitly learned, unconscious and conscious, difficult to change and easily changed, subjective knowledge and objective knowledge. What can we do? Hall suggests that the only way to learn the internal culture of others is to actively. Participate in their culture. When one first enters a new culture, only the most overt behaviors are apparent. As one spends more time in that new culture, the underlying beliefs, values, and thought patterns that dictate that the behavior will be uncovered. What this model teaches us is that. We cannot judge a new culture based only on what we can see when we first enter it. We must take the time to get to know individuals from that culture and interact with them. Only by doing so can we uncover the values and the beliefs that underlie the behavior of that society. He also categorizes cultures as being either high or low context, depending on the degree to which meaning comes from the settings or from the words being exchanged. The general terms high context and low context, popularized by Edward Hall, are used to describe broad brush. Cultural differences between societies. Hall defines these two terms in the following manners: a high context communication or message is one in which most of the information is already in the person, while very little is in the coded, explicitly transmitted part of the message. A low context communication is just an opposite. The mass of the information is vested in the explicit code. High context refers to societies or groups where people have close connections over a long period of time. Many aspects of cultural behavior are not made explicit because. Most numbers know what to do and what to think from years of interaction with each other. Your family is probably an except example of a high context environment. A high context communication or message is one of the information either in the context or internalized in the person. Well. Very little is in the coded, explicit, transmitted part of the message. 
Low contest refers to the societies where people tend to have many connections, but of shorter duration, or for some specific reason. In these societies, cultural behavior and beliefs may need to be spelled out explicitly, so that those coming into the cultural environment know how to behave. Low context communication is just the opposite. The mass of the information is vested in the explicit code, and the context or situation plays a minimum role. Now let's look at the simple terms: high context culture. High context cultures don't rely on verbally explicit communication, or written, or formal information. But more internalized understandings of what is communicated. People cared about multiple cross-cutting ties and interactions with others, and long-term relations with strong boundaries between who is accepted as a belonging and who is considered as an outsider. Knowledge is situational and relational. Decisions and activities focus around personal, face-to-face -face relationships, often around a central person who has authorities. There are some examples, such as small religious congregations, a party with friends, family gatherings, expensive gourmet restaurants. And neighborhood restaurants with a regular client, undergraduate on campus friendships, regular pickup games, and hosting a friend in your home overnight. But in low context cultures, people play by external rules, which are called rule orientation. More knowledge is codified, public. External and separation of time, of space, of activities, of relationships. Different from high context cultures, they have more interpersonal connections of shorter duration. Since they are task-centered, decisions and activities focus around what needs to be done. And a division of responsibilities. There are some examples, such as large U.S. airports, a chain supermarket, a cafeteria, a convenience store, and sports where rules are clearly laid out. A motel. Well, these terms are sometimes useful in describing some aspects of a culture. One can never say a culture is high or low because societies all contain both modes. High and low are therefore less relevant as a description of a whole people, and more useful to describe and understand particular situation and environments. Here are the ways that high and low contexts differ. Firstly, in the structure of relationships, high context accepts dense, interesting networks and long-term relations with strong boundaries, in which relationship is more important than task. But how context expects loose, wide networks and short-term. Compartmentalized relationships, in which task is more important than relationship. Secondly, in terms of the main type of cultural knowledge, high context shows that more knowledge is below the waterline, called implicit, with patterns that are not fully conscious, hard to explain. Even if you are a member of that culture, low context shows that more knowledge 
is above the water line, called explicit, which is consciously organized. Thirdly, it is about entering high and low contest situation. High contest can be difficult to enter if you are an outsider because you don't carry the contest information internally, and because you can't instantly create close relationships. Low contests are relatively easy to enter if you are an outsider because the environment contains much of the information you need to participate, and because can you form relation fairly soon, and because the important thing is accomplishing a task rather than feeling your way into a relationship. Remember that every culture and every situation has its high and low aspects. Often, one situation will contain an inner high contest core and an outer low contest ring for those who are less involved. For instance, a PTA is usually a low contest situation. Any parent can join. The dates of the meetings, who is president, what will be discussed, etc., are all explicitly available information, and it is usually fairly clear how to participate in the meetings. However, if this is a small town, perhaps the people who run the PTA all know each other very well and have many overlapping interests. They may agree on what should be discussed or what should happen without ever really talking about it. They have unconscious, unexpressed values that influence their decisions. Other parents from outside may not understand how decisions are actually being made. So the PTA is still low contest, but it has a high contest subgroup that is in turn part of the high contest small town society. When you enter a high contest situation, it doesn't immediately become a low contest culture just because you came in the door. It is still a high contest culture, and you are just ignorant. Also, even low contest cultures can be difficult to learn. Religious dietary laws, medical training, and written language all take years to understand. The point is that information has been made conscious, systematic, and available to those who have the resources to learn it. Questions: What are the main features of a high contest cultures? What are the main features of the low contest cultures?